if there is anything that the highly educational classic Jurassic Park documentary series has taught us, it's that herbivorous dinosaurs are docile, practically defenseless creatures, so calm that you can instantly tame them just by approaching their faces with an open palm. Carnivores are always in bloodthirsty berserker mode with no pauses, and the plant eaters sit back and watch and let themselves be eaten alive. Spoiler alert, that's not how nature functions. This video will go into the true danger that herbivorous dinosaurs were capable of and debunk the myth of the pacifist veggivore. Of course, we don't even need to look to prehistoric animals to dispel the idea. Moose kill more people annually than bears do, and hippo attacks account for over 500 annual human deaths. They're herbivorous, and they take out half as many people as saltwater crocodiles do. They're just that aggressive. So what if we brought back all the herbivorous dinosaurs on the planet at the same time, at their maximum distribution and population? Which ones would be the most dangerous to humans? We're not talking just the deadly factor or raw physical power, but rather which species would result in the highest fatalities. They'll be judged on a combination of speculated aggression, power, speed, and likelihood to encounter humans. There's also the fact that humans are not the wisest bunch when it comes to approaching large, potentially dangerous animals. We also might include some omnivores because they cheated and got into the video somehow. Omnivores do that, you know. First up is the avoidable accident tier. Creatures that are either less deadly or incredibly threatening on paper, but not a practical concern to human society. Protoceratops is the first on our list. The 60 to 100 kilogram ceratopsian sports a bony frill and powerful beak, and may have had quills on its tail. The fighting dinosaurs fossil demonstrates that it fought against predators like Velociraptor, and had a bite powerful enough to pin the carnivore's hand. No passive herbivory here, no sir. The reason it's in the bottom tier is its location. Mongolia is very sparsely populated, with just 2.26 people per square kilometer. That's less than 6 people per square mile, and resources are much more scant than they were in the Cretaceous. The Protoceratops population likely wouldn't last long and wouldn't encounter humans very often. Unless, of course, the Mongolian sheep herders decided to domesticate these strange creatures and use them as a new food source, which wouldn't be out of character for the frankly brilliant people of the steppes. I imagine that the rate of accidental injuries would rise considerably in an agricultural setting. Heterodontosaurus this 2 to 10 kilogram tusked South African biped was basically a raccoon that couldn't carry rabies. It had a powerful bite and tough teeth, perfect for grinding up tough vegetation, with some studies suggesting it may have had a limited capacity for omnivory. In a human dominated world, Heterodontosaurus would function like a cross between a rat and a pig, perhaps making its home in fields, landfills, and other areas with large amounts of easily available food. Their small size minimizes their threat to humans, but they'd quickly become agricultural pests. Its close relative, Pegamastax, according to British Bloke 2256, would dip into a life of crime. Non-tail-whipping sauropods are by far the physically strongest on this list, but easily the slowest. They're the most likely to cause infrastructural and agricultural damage, but unlikely to attack humans or frequent areas without large trees. Giants like Argentinosaurus wouldn't see individual humans as anything worth stomping on deliberately, but may cause some fatalities by virtue of being so large. Government task forces would need to be formed with the purpose of keeping sauropods away from densely populated areas, in order to avoid damage to buildings and roads while keeping animal rights groups happy. Think the International Elephant Foundation on steroids. Therizinosaurus and Dinochirus go together. The twin Mongolian Grim Reapers are physical powerhouses, each comfortably exceeding 5 tons and with claws capable of opening up a human torso with the flick of a wrist. Dinochirus likely lived around bodies of water and ate a mixture of aquatic plants and fish, so modern Mongolia might not treat it very well, while Therizinosaurus would have used its claws to help strip leaves from branches. Their location, again, brings them down in the ranking given how few people actually live close together in the Gobi Desert. If they managed to move south to less extreme environments, they'd likely become more of a problem. Now onto the unfortunate end tier, starting off with moas and elephant birds. Ostriches are quite aggressive when they feel threatened, and they kill two to three people annually in South Africa. Take that, make them four times as big, and put them in the boonies of New Zealand and Madagascar. One kick will rip open your guts and send you flying 20 feet. Fortunately, both those areas are relatively thin in terms of human population. Tail-whipping sauropods are next up. Recent studies show that long-tailed sauropods like Apatosaurus, while capable of moving their tails at up to 30 meters a second, wouldn't have been able to break the sound barrier. Sauropod expert Daniel Vidal has criticized that study, however, so keep that in mind for future analyses. 
At any rate, a gigantic biological whip hitting a human's ribcage at 67 miles an hour or 108 kilometers an hour would basically turn you to jelly. I rank the tail whipping sauropods higher than their less flexible relatives because they just have another weapon to accidentally annihilate you with, even if it probably wouldn't be on purpose. Ankylosaurs and notosaurs are a broad group, pun intended. These stout quadrupedal tanks were part of the group Thyreophora, a dinosaur clade famous for its heavily armored and armed members. Ankylosaurs have tail clubs, while notosaurs lack the club but typically have more spikes and heavier armor. Both groups ranged across the northern hemisphere, and early ankylosaurs have also been found in Australia, Antarctica, and South America. Frankly put, ankylosaurs would be able to go and do wherever and whatever they wanted. Their large size and incredible defenses would make them practically immune to any non-human predators, and even we would need heavy weaponry to take them out. That just isn't practical on a global scale, especially with all the other giant archosaurs running around. Brain scans indicate that notosaurs in particular may have had poor hearing, so anyone encountering one in the wild would need to make sure that the animal knows they're there. Startling something like a giant Priconodon, an elephant-sized notosaur from Maryland, might be the last thing you ever do. Proper ankylosaurs, like the Canadian Anodontosaurus, seem to have better senses, but were so wired to be defensive that they might just try to crush you anyway. Nothing like getting squished by a reptilian Mjolnir. Pachycephalosaurs are kind of like if mountain goats joined Cobra Kai. Mid-sized herbivorous bipeds with the largest species at less than half a ton, these boneheads could cause serious damage to any human. Pachycephalosaurs dotted North America and Asia during the Cretaceous, and paleopathology studies show that they likely used their armored domes for headbutting and possibly for defense. To a human, that would be like a grizzly bear hitting you with a kettlebell. Not fun. My guess is that Pachys would cause the most deaths through virtue of car crash injuries similar to modern deer, but I'm not sure if that really vibes with the spirit of this video. Herbivorous slash omnivorous ornithomimids like Gallimimus shouldn't be left off the list. While not as massive as the moa or elephant bird, these theropods were extraordinarily fast and could be bigger than modern ostriches. They probably were herbivores focusing on tough plant matter, although that's still up for debate, and so could find homes pretty much anywhere things grow in the northern hemisphere. Just like how cassowaries and emus can mess you up today, the bigger ornithomimids could easily incapacitate a human with a swift kick. If they were as defensive as modern ratites, they'd suffer from a serious attitude problem and likely cause a number of human fatalities globally. They'd be the scourge of the neighborhood, too fast to really catch, and too big to confront without firepower. Platiosaurids. Some of you might be surprised that platiosaurids rank higher than their larger cousins, but hear me out. Let's use the famous Platiosaurus as an example. Ranging in size from large wolf level to that of an Asian elephant, they'd crowd the forests and lush countrysides of Central Europe, munching on crops and whatever trees they could find. They're small enough to see you as a potential threat and big enough to completely demolish you with their knife-sized claws. Many platiosaurids lived with large predators like Rysukians and theropods, and so would have been well accustomed to defending themselves. Imagine running into a platiosaurus in the Black Forest. Brothers Grimm would have a field day with telling children about how you were disemboweled by a leaf-eating dragon. Finally, we have the avoid at all costs tier. These animals are exceptionally dangerous by themselves and would be made even more dangerous by how many human tourists would try to pet them. You cannot pet that dog. No, no. No. You can't pet that dog. No, you can't pet that dog. No, you can't pet that dog. Stegosaurs. That's right, stegosaurs. Another group of Thyreophorans, these famous spike-tailed herbivores had incredible weaponry along with the flexibility to use it. Kentrosaurus, a hippo-sized genus from Tanzania, could almost sting like a scorpion with its wicked thagomizers. Wounds on big theropods like Allosaurus show that stegosaurs were not afraid to use their spikes as defensive weapons and were quite skilled at it. The group covered the northern hemisphere, including quite a few now populated human areas, and it isn't difficult to imagine a brain-rotting TikTok trend of trying to pet the spiky lizard plot twist that nobody saw coming, you're gonna get impaled. These animals lived with multi-ton brawling theropods. Don't mess. You knew they'd be on this list. Everybody welcomed the big hadrosaurs, affectionately referred to as the goose elephants. While some underrate their defensive capabilities while others exaggerate them beyond any form of logic or reason, the truth is that big hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus were formidable animals despite their lack of specialized weaponry. At 5.6 tons on average, and with a maximum size of at least 12 tons, Edmontosaurus adnectans coexisted with T. rex itself and clearly did quite well for itself. They lived in enormous groups of hundreds of individuals, groups that would cause ecological disasters if introduced into modern North America. The Mexican genus Magnapolia was another brute at up to 12 meters and 8 to 10 tons, but North America didn't have a monopoly on giant hadrosaurs. 
Gentongosaurus from China was the biggest of the lot. The largest specimen massed about 19 tons, comparable to the biggest somewhat verifiable Paleoloxodon remains, with smaller individuals at 13 and 15 tons. These Titan hadrosaurs combined elephant plus size, high speed, group behavior, and intelligence comparable to many theropods, with a probable attitude of defensiveness created by living with tyrannosaurs. Spooking them could cause a devastating stampede, and even angering a single individual would put you in harm's way. Take everything dangerous about horses, their bite, their muscle power, their rib shattering kicks, and multiply it by 20. This wouldn't just apply to wild hadrosaurs wary of predators either. You just know that people are going to want to ride these, and odds are many of them won't be too smart about it. A 2023 analysis calculated that over 700 fatal equestrian accidents occur annually in the United States alone. And if you tried to industrialize hadrosaur racing, you'd be able to dwarf those numbers. We're talking animals with the raw physical strength to crush cars and knock over semi-trucks, and all the manic paranoia of herbivores constantly in danger of being eaten. Not OSHA approved at all. Medium and large ceratopsians would also cause more than their fair share of problems. Let's put this into perspective. From the year 2000 to 2015, 25 people were injured by bison in Yellowstone National Park. Out of those 25, 20 people admitted to approaching the bison, and the other five didn't back away when the bison came towards them. American bison max out at around 1,200 kilograms or 2,600 pounds, comparable to the relatively small ceratopsian Cosmoceratops. And the Pseudoceratops hit 1.5 metric tons. Pachyrhinosaurus canadensis weighed 3 to 4 tons. Pentaceratops was around 2.5, and the big two, Triceratops and Taurosaurus, passed 10 tons at maximum size. They were deceptively agile with wide ranges of motion, and would gore a silly amount of tourists before Yellowstone and other similar parks were forced to install giant fences on the roads. Thank you to everyone who participated in the community posts leading up to this video. What do you think would be the herbivorous dinosaurs to cause the most human deaths? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy thought experiments about moving prehistoric animals to different environments, you'll probably enjoy my upcoming epic fantasy book series, Extinction. The series takes place on an alternate Earth where ancient civilizations like the Aztecs and Carthaginians form psychic bonds with prehistoric animals. The first book, Obsidian Dawn, releases this fall. Feel free to join the channel to support my work, and have a great day! I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time. with their nails done.